Hi there guys and welcome back to the shop for episode 10 on the high voltage series. Today we're going with mechanical engineering instead of electrical and we're going to talk about nuts and bolts and woods and stuff. One of the things you're going to need to do as you work with your neon sign transformer is you're going to have to bolt it to something. You're going to have to mount it. I have seen some artistic interpretations of mechanical engineering when it comes to mounting these. First off, drywall screws are right out. I'm telling you that just in the first minute of the video. Don't use drywall screws to mount your neon sign transformer. They're brittle, they snap, they break, it'll fall down and go boom. That's bad. So, I'm going to grab a generic piece of wood and we're gonna set this right on here. Now this is just a, what is that? It's a one by whatever. And that should easily be enough to hold the weight of even this beefy transformer. So you put, and this is like, this is my stand in for, you may have a plywood base, you may have whatever. Um, stay away from MDF as a rule. Metal is great. Like th this will quite comfortably hang from a quarter inch sheet of metal or even an eighth inch sheet of metal. Um, you've got a lot of weight in one spot. So hanging it gets problematic. Wherever possible, have this sitting like this and make sure to maintain your clearances. You don't wanna have anything within, for me, I'm gonna say six inches of each end. Just, just imagine a, a six inch hemisphere like the, the closest you want anything to your electrode is the distance from the base to here. That's, that's, you don't wanna have stuff like bumped right up to it. It's really easy to do. Don't do that. Um, so to mount this on a piece of wood is really easy. Just mark out your whole pattern. It'll be different for different brands and different sizes and different models. Like it's all over the map. Take it off and then now that you've got your marked out pattern, drill your holes. It's very simple. When I drill my holes, I like to use a much smaller drill bit. Like this is, so you want, when you're drilling the holes for your, your bolts, you want one that's way smaller and one that's a size bigger. So I'm drilling for quarter 20 fasteners because everything else on the thing's quarter 20. If you can, and I can't think of any reason you can't, when at all possible, if you're working with a standard like Transformer, where everything's quarter 20, use quarter 20 for your mounting hardware, then you only need one wrench for everything. So I use a little tiny drill. This is a, a pilot drill with countersink for doing uh, just basic wood framing stuff. But I use a little tiny thing so that when I'm drilling my hole, when I've marked out where I'm gonna drill it, I put this, it's way easy to center this and get it perfectly in the center. And you do it like this, it just, things are gonna line up better the first time. Then, since we've got a quarter inch bolt, I use a three eighths, you can see it's just a little bit bigger for my drill bit, and that gives me just a little wiggle room in the hole. Then if things aren't just perfectly lined up, it's more likely to work. The bolt doesn't care. Um, I'm using just standard quarter 20 hardware. Super nerds can tell you what grade that bolt is from those three ticks on top, but just quarter 20 hardware. You don't need anything fancy. Grade two, which is cheese, would work just fine for this. Grade five is totally cool. You don't need grade 10. Um, so whatever quarter 20 bolts you find at your hardware store are going to be strong enough to hold this. I like a nice little washer just to protect the paint on top. I put a washer on the bottom to keep the wood from crushing too bad and make sure that your bolt is whatever length you need to get through the NST, through the wood and through the nut. When you buy your bolt, make sure that you've got enough room to totally go through the nut and you wanna have like two or three threads sticking out the other side of the nut. So with that, let's mount it. I'm gonna show you a cool trick. All right, we're gonna, we're gonna put this on. This is gonna be so hard to do offside, but I'm gonna try and I might die doing this. We're gonna clamp that in there tight. All right, I'm gonna show you a neat trick for mounting your neon sign transformer, especially if you have to do this on your own. I'm gonna put one bolt with a washer 
through the middle hole. Now on this neon sign transformer, I can do this. You can't always. So looking at the bottom of my neon sign transformer, you can see that we've got outside corner holes that are that wrap all the way around, right? But there's two down the middle where it's a notch, right? So you can fit a bolt like this and you can slide it all the way out. These just go right in the corner. This will slide in and out. That's a really cool feature and I'm gonna show you why. You can take and have bolt with washer and put that in the bottom and then put a washer on the back and put a bolt on it. And we're just gonna put the bolt on a little bit. We're not, we're enough that the, or we're gonna put the nut on a little bit, enough that's fully engaged, but we've got this floats, okay? And we're gonna have another one ready because you're gonna need it in a hurry. So I've got a bolt with a washer on it that I can just stick right in. And we're gonna put this in the middle and it's sticking up like a quarter inch, right? All right. So now I'm gonna grab my NST. There's no easy, comfortable, simple way to do this. And I'm gonna dodge the robot of death. And you just bring this over and do this offside facing away from you <laughs> and just hook that on there. And now the weight of the neon sign transformer is hanging off that bolt. So I can put this one in and just hold it and dodge the death robot again. It's coming at me. And tighten this down. And now it's hanging there on its own. So now I can tighten this down. Why are you bugging me? You're like all up on me. Just calm down. I'm, I'm working here. So now we can tighten this one down a little bit and we can, so the, the transformer is held roughly in place while I get the other four installed. Now you don't need all six bolts to hold the thing in there. So I'm only gonna do it with four, but I'm gonna show you how to jog them around so it stays together. Use the first two middle just to get it in position. And then you grab one of the outsides and since the other ones aren't tightened down, that needs to be just a little bit more loose. You can wiggle the transformer and it's not comfortable. There you go. And get that one in. Then we're gonna grab another one. Get that in. Okay. Grab a couple washers for the back. because you don't need six bolts holding it in. Like if it's hanging upside down over your head or something, maybe, but short of that, it's a little overkill. Now I'm gonna put a bolt through on the bottom. Okay, washer on the back and a nut. And I'm gonna take that middle one out of the top because we've got two other ones holding it on top, so it's not going anywhere. And I'm gonna stick that through down on the bottom. Excuse me, please. Ah! Okay, that's in there. Please submit all of your comments about the safety of operating in proximity to a robot while it's you know, running an automated program. It's especially cool since the e-stop is way over there. It's totally safe, fine. Send me all your comments about how I'm a complete idiot with the robot, yeah, I know. Um, so now we're mounted and I'm gonna lift that up a little bit and then tighten these down and the table's moving. I'm gonna lift that, lift it up a little bit to where I want it. It's still not quite on the line, but it's mounted. And it doesn't really have to be perfect because we're on the enclosed bolts. So I don't gain anything by fighting it. So I'm gonna tighten these down. And this is all just with the one tool, would be easier if I had 
a socket or an open end wrench to back these up with, but this is fine. Everything's fine. It's okay. And the robot hasn't killed me yet. And it's going to be just, just okay. I'm fine. And that is now time. A mounted neon sign transform bolted to a piece of wood ready for use in whatever application you may have. But that's, that's the basics of how it begins, is just having it attached rigidly to something, especially at the hobbyist scale where you're probably gonna be making, uh, you know, for first projects with these, or one of the first few projects, is usually like a small tabletop Tesla coil, maybe like a four inch Tesla coil. And you're gonna wanna have that located in the base and mounted in there. And we're gonna talk about some of the problems you'll have with that because this is a big metal box and you're gonna put it under your primary coil. So we're gonna get into dealing with this acting like some kind of a shorted turn partially and stuff. But that's the mechanical side of the mounting. We'll get to the electrical side of the mounting in the future when we're actually getting into specific projects. But that's how you mount your neon sign transformer. You guys have fun. I'm Chris Bowden. The robot doesn't have a name. I've been calling it Turvy. Somebody asked about that. If you have a good idea for a name for the robot, my awesome cameraman, please let me know. And as always, I'll see you next time.